Okay, so in this video I'm going to show you how I made this oversized striped cardigan for Halloween. It came out a little bit bigger than I was expecting. I based it off a cardigan I already own, which I'm pretty sure is an extra large, but um, I'm still really happy with how it came out. But if you would want it to be smaller, I think I would take about an inch off of all of the measurements to make it smaller. And just for reference, I usually wear between like a small or a medium, depending on what it is. And I'm five foot seven and like 130 pounds. So yeah, you can make your decision off the measurements based off that. Okay, so there's a few things that you're gonna need to be able to do this. First, I have Big Twist Value yarn. Uh, it's 100% acrylic. It is like pretty cheap yarn if you're like on a budget. Uh, I like it better than Red Heart yarn, which I think is a little scratchier than this. So yeah, that's what I'm using. I bought probably way too much of it and that's okay. I am going to be using a five millimeter crochet hook. <laughs> You're gonna need a tape measure to double check the length. Uh, I like to have something to write down how many rows and chains and stitches I've done because I find that when I'm trying to recreate the size, the stitches can like stretch just from the way you've laid it down or held it. Once I do the first like arm or the first front panel, I like to just write down how many rows and stitches I've done because the measuring tape can lie to you, I've found out. So once you're happy with the first one, I think it's good to write down exactly how many stitches stitches and rows you've done. So, you know, do that probably. And then, not necessary, but I use it. My stitch markers, I pretty much only use them when I'm doing the top of the collar piece. So yeah. Uh, so in order to start the cardigan's ribbing, you're going to do a slip knot. There's a ton of different ways to do a slip knot, but the way I do it is I I hold the loop in this like U shape or the yarn in this U shape, and then I hook my finger on the end where it's turned. And then I flip my finger over to make a loop. You reach through the loop you just made and grab the short end of the yarn. And then you can pull in the short end of the yarn again to tighten it on your crochet hook. So for the ribbing of the cardigan, you're gonna need to chain nine, one of which is a turning chain. And the way you chain is you yarn over and then you pull the yarn through the loop that was already on your crochet hook. Also, this loop right here that's on your crochet hook is not counted in your chain count. So in order to start your first row of single crochets, you are going to insert into the second chain from your hook, well, into one of the little Vs that you could see on the top. Then you yarn over and pull through, and then you yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook so that you only have one again. So again, what you're going to do is you're going to insert your hook into the next V and then you're going to yarn over and pull through and then yarn over and pull through those two. And then you're just going to continue like that until you have eight single crochets on your in your row. Just a little side note here, I am working with orange yarn in these clips just because the black yarn, it, it just makes it like harder to see exactly what's going on with the yarn. I think the orange yarn isn't that much clearer, unfortunately, but I was trying. Maybe I'll try to get a closer shot next time. But yeah, so the ribbing should not be orange, it's black. <laughs> if you decide to get the same yarn that I'm using, uh, be aware that it splits a little bit so just be conscious of that as you're crocheting because it's kind of easy not to notice when like one little loop comes through and it's like a little imperfection but you know if you care be mindful so now that i've completed my first row of single crochets i am going to go ahead and start the next row in order to start the next row you need to chain one and then you're going to turn your work and then the first single crochet from the chain is the one you're going to work into. And you're going to work into the back loops only. You see the V shape. You'll only insert your crochet hook into the back part of that V shape. So then you'll just work in single crochets across those rows as well. And you'll continue on like this, uh, working into the back loops only for the rest of the ribbing. So you'll continue on with your rows, working in the back loops only with your single crochets. Uh, for me, it was about 32 rows long and uh, 
that ended up equaling about just under 11 inches in total length for the ribbing. I'm not going to be actually doing the ribbing in orange. I did it once already in black and I thought it didn't show up well enough. It's just harder to see the loops and stuff what I was trying to demonstrate. So I was just doing it again on the orange yarn. And so yeah, I'm going to keep this so that I can demonstrate how to do the first single crochet row before starting. Hello. Mystery time, baby. <laughs> Hello. Okay, so now that I've finished my rows, my 32 rows, I am just counting them really quick. So the way that I count my rows is if it's indented like this last one is, or like my first one, then uh, every row after that one, like the ones that are that stick out, I'll know that every one that sticks out is two rows. For the first half of the front panel, I did 32 rows total and it should be just under 11 inches. So let me just double check that really quick. So here I am just double checking the length of my ribbing. And as you can see, when you don't uh, slightly stretch out your work, it'll be shorter than what it actually is. Okay, so here I am measuring my ribbing height. It's around two and a half inches ish with the eight chains but after the single crochet first single crochet row it makes the black section about three inches tall and that's what i based my stripes off of but you don't have to do that you can do whatever you want the world is your oyster do different colors do different stripes i don't care i'm just showing you but if you do follow my tutorial send me pictures or something on my instagram I'll, it'll be on the screen somewhere okay so i brought the orange yarn back uh so that it's a little easier to see what i'm doing for the first single crochet row so i chain one and then you just have to find somewhere for each of the rows to put a single crochet. I wouldn't recommend putting more than one single crochet in one of the rows because it'll make your work balloon out a little bit, which isn't like the end of the world or anything, but you kind of want it to stay more true to size. It'll just be bigger than you want it to be probably if you put too many single crochets in there. You can have a little bit of ballooning. It's It'll be okay. It's gonna get sewn together. Okay, so now I'm getting ready to change colors for the first time and uh, where you would normally do a single crochet to end the row, what you're going to do is you're going to half finish your single crochet. You're still going to yarn over, uh, you're still going to put it through the loop and yarn over and pull it so you have two loops on your crochet hook, but then you're going to grab your next color. Then you make a little loop with your next color and I like to hold down the old yarn I was using as I do it and then you pull your new color through the two loops to finish the single crochet. So now I'm just taking the last working yarn and uh, the tail end of the new working or the new yarn that I'm working with and I like to do two knots. Uh, I do my first knot and I make sure it's not too tight so that the stitches aren't being pulled at all. And then I'll do a second knot and that one I'll pull really tight because uh, the first knot will prevent the stitches from being pulled awkwardly. I forgot to mention after uh, switching colors that you can cut off the yarn you had been previously working with. I only noticed once it was getting in my way while I was crocheting. But yeah, just leave some of the yarn for a tail end to weave in your ends later. I've seen other people just like cut off their tail ends like really close to the end of their work like to like instead of weaving them in I've seen a lot of people just cut them off at the knot and uh I'm really afraid of my work coming undone so I do not do that I'd be I'm a little extra about it but I'll show that later and then this is how you have double crochet first you're going to need to chain two and then you'll work into um you'll yarn over once and then you'll work into this little hole right here and then you'll put the hook through so that you'll have the V on top of your crochet hook. And then you'll yarn over again, pull through so you have three loops, yarn over one more time and pull through all three loops. And that's how you do a half double crochet. So here I'm doing it again. So hopefully you can see it better this time at least. 
the half double crochet in the UK, I'm pretty sure is called um, a half treble crochet. So if you ever hear that, that's what that means. Um, I'm going to continue on with the orange for six rows with this um, yarn and it makes it to be just under three inches. So if you're shooting for the thickness of my stripes, then you'll go for around three inches. But for me, it's six rows tall. I'm going to continue on with my stripes doing three inch stripes at a time and I'm going to keep going until my work is about 18 inches tall which is also known as 33 rows for me and uh, then we're going to start decreasing so I will be back when I get to that. Okay, I have crocheted up to my 18 inches, which is actually this row, and uh, I started the next row because my decreases are going to start on this side because I want this to be the front because the opposite end has the little knots you can see. So I have to decrease on the side that uh, all of my knots are on. It's going to be fine. So yeah, I'm just going to continue on and then uh, I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so here I am doing my first decreasing row. What you're going to do is you're going to leave two of the stitches unworked. You're going to yarn over and pull through like you would to do your half double crochet. But then instead of finishing it, you're going to yarn over again and then put through the next stitch and then yarn over and pull through like you would for another half double crochet. And then you'll end up with about five loops on your crochet hook. You'll yarn over one more time and then pull through all of them and they'll group together. When reading patterns, this is also known as half double crochet two together. So if you ever see that, that's what that means. Okay, so to continue on, you'll just chain two and flip your work like you normally would. And then you'll just repeat the same thing you did on the last row to decrease. You set up for a half double crochet without pulling the last loop through and then act as if those aren't even there and do another uh, halfway through a half double crochet and pull all through. And then you just continue on with normal half to double crochets from there. Okay, so I'm back and I'm going to show you how to change color and decrease in the same motion. Um, I like to make all of my stripes an even number of rows because it keeps all the knots on one side. So yeah, I like having all my knots on one side. It's just, I don't really think I get much indentation with this type of yarn, um, but I still like to do it just in case anything weird happens with the knots. I just know that it's all just gonna be on one side. It's gonna be at least cohesive. So here I'm just showing how to do a decrease and also change your colors. I was struggling a little bit in this clip uh, right here. Uh, there's a tiny little V you work into. You probably have seen it if you've been doing your decreases properly, but uh, that's the one you work into. It's kind of easy to miss it. But yeah, uh, I didn't yarn over at one point, so <laughs> I had to restart it but now I have five of the loops on my hook and I'm just gonna grab the yarn and pull it through like I have been to change colors and struggle a little bit more because uh, there's just a lot of loops to pull through and it just did not want to go the yarn was splitting with it it was just I was struggling but it worked out We're back, baby. I'm awake, but at what cost? All right, I slammed a cup of coffee, and so let's fucking go. Let's just do it. What you got to say? No comment. I feel like you're gonna attack me. Okay, yeah. <laughs> this hurts. Ow. Uh. Go away. Go and get out. What the fuck? <laughs> she just smacked the microphone. She was like, I tried to push her away and she turned around like a stink. Hey, psycho. What are you doing? Okay, we're doing this thing now. I'm going to start with the front panel. Okay, so right here I was trying to demonstrate how to do the magic knot, but I don't think I showed it very well. So I'll just link the video to teach you how to do it. In the description that I learned from. The magic knot is just what you use to connect two yarns when you run out of yarn. So yeah. Okay so I've decreased to the point where my work is now only six inches wide and for me that ended up at the next color change. So I'm doing orange now and I'm going to continue on working upwards until 
my work is 28 and a half inches long. And uh, that for me, that was about 55 rows. So yeah, I actually also added one row of Ha- one extra row of half double crochets because I wanted to give a lot of room on the shoulders where my sewing was so that like I guess just it was less likely for the yarn to stretch really bad since that's where most of the weight sits. Okay so the next thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to make this sleeve. It's pretty simple. I'm going to start with the ribbing which is six chains long, well seven counting the turning chain. And then I made it eight inches long which is 24 rows. So I will do that really quick uh, and then I'll show you how to increase for this. Whoop. Okay so now that I have the ribbing for my arm cuff done it should when slightly stretched out, measure around eight inches. And then the height will end up because of the six chains be only two inches tall. And after the single crochet row, the height of the first black stripe will probably only be about two and a half inches, but I'm not going to add more black to make it three inches. I'm just gonna go into the orange after the single crochet row like I've been doing. And here I am switching to orange so that I can continue on with my stripes like I have been. Okay, so in order to increase, you're going to act like you normally would and chain two to start your half double crochets. But um, after you do your first half double crochet into that first single crochet from your chain, you're just going to half double crochet into the same single crochet that you just did the first half double crochet into instead of moving on to the next one. So you are going to continue on increasing at the start of each of your rows and not at the end um, until your sleeve reaches 18 inches wide. And for me, that took 26 rows of increasing to get my sleeve up to 18 inches. Okay, so I've increased the width of my sleeve until it was 18 inches now, which took about 26 rows. And now I'm going to just continue on working upwards with half double crochets, not increasing until it reached the whole length of the sleeve reaches about 21 inches, which is for me 40 rows. Okay, so for my back panel ribbing, I just doubled the amount of rows that I did for the front panels and I decided to add about three rows because there's going to be about a half an inch of ribbing coming out from the front panels. So I know that when it's buttoned, they're going to overlap. So it's only adding a half an inch total to the width of the front. And so yeah, I did what that turned out to be is 23 and a half inches long. That's what I'm going for. So I wrote down 64 rows plus a couple more lol. So I'll be back when that's finished and I'll let you know the final count and the final measurement. So the amount of rows I ended up with was 67 and when it was slightly stretched out and I measured it, it ended up being 22 and a half inches but I was going for 23 and a half but I just rolled with it. Um, it ended up too big anyway so it's a good thing I didn't go any bigger. I trust the amount of rows that I decided on more than I trust my tape measure, to be honest. So I had three rows, that is about that much. I can see that as being like an inch and a half-ish. So also I had already went ahead and did my first turning row, the single crochet row, because uh, this, the stitches stretch out a little bit, so I wanted to get like a more accurate measurement of the back panel. I had held up both of my front panels to it, like overlaid it, and there was a little bit of space. So I'm hoping this is going to work out. You got to kind of figure things out when you're winging things a little bit so hopefully it works out so I'm just gonna keep going with uh, my pattern as I have been it's gonna be probably a while before like this thing is gonna be way long by the time I come back because it's just gonna be the same stuff that I've been doing six rows of orange six rows of black you know just in a pattern and then I'll be back for when I do the stuff for the neckline I'm probably gonna do three rows of decreases for that so 
I will be back. So on my top I have 66 stitches total and um, it actually, I forgot to mention this, it ended up a little wider than I had meant for it to be um, because right here this stitch pushed it out just a little bit so it ballooned out a little bit but that's okay. I'm just gonna use that to sew with that area. So yeah, this thing's a little bigger than I meant. Okay, so now for my back piece I'm going to do three decreasing rows to connect the shoulder pieces to the front panel shoulder pieces and I am going to start with 18 stitches on both sides uh like I'm I count 18 stitches in and then use a stitch marker to know when to stop and then I'm just gonna continue on and do half double crochets until I reach the last two stitches and then I'm going to decrease and then I do that for three rows so that I can end up with 16 stitches total and that'll make it so that I'll have the same amount of stitches on the back panel shoulder pieces as the front panel shoulder pieces and once these last three rows are added the back piece will be the same length as the two front panels I also had messed up doing the measurements for the shoulder piece before this and had taken everything out and at that point I had totally forgotten that one of like my last row needed to be black so it was all orange. So it's a good thing I messed up in the first place because it needed to be taken apart a little bit anyway. Okay so now I'm going to show you how to anchor on your yarn like halfway through the stitches. Um, you're going to want to make sure that your stitches are continuing the same direction that they had been because the fronts and the backs of the stitches look different. It'll look a little weird if two front stitches are right on top of each other. So you'll yarn over and pull through the stitch you want to anchor into and then you'll just chain two like you normally would and that'll hold it on there. Uh, for me it actually that time it didn't hold it on super well so I had to go and tie it but uh, so the first half double crochet you do, you'll work into the same stitch that you anchored onto. And that's where you start you'll start your decrease. So in this clip I am tying a little knot onto my work to really hold down where I had anchored in to continue on with my crochets. Um it was a little loose, so I am just tying a knot. First I had to make sure to slip the yarn through because if I had tied a knot right there it would have been on the right side of my work which I wouldn't have wanted because it would have been facing outwards um, and then I just insert my needle through one of the stitches and used that to tie a knot. My tail end was a little short so I was struggling a little bit but it was okay. So yeah I just made a little knot and it made it so that where I started wasn't going to keep being loose. Using the stitches to tie a knot is also how I secure my tail ends. So yeah, um, that's how I'll secure any of my tail ends that are not where I had changed colors. So like these, I'm not going to tie knots into the stitches. I'm just going to hide them because there's already knots there. So I don't think the yarn is going to go anywhere. Okay, so here I am showing how to weave in my tail ends. I have no idea why I decided to use the black as an example because I know it doesn't really show up, but the way I do it is I just get the darning needle under like the little legs of the stitches and just weave it through for a little while before pulling the needle completely through. And you're going to want to stretch your work after pulling the needle through because uh, just in the time of you owning it, your work will stretch and uh, you don't want that tail end popping out on your front side. So I also like to leave just a tiny little bit of the tail sticking out of the back or the wrong side because uh, I just want to give it just that little bit more slack to not slip through and show up on my front side ever. 
Okay, so now that I've completed all my pieces, it's time to sew it together, which is like probably one of the worst parts for me. I just hate doing it. So let's get it over with. I'm going to be showing two different ways that, to sew it together. I prefer the second way that I do it, but because there's just so much like material here, I'm afraid that where it sits on the shoulders will like because I, usually I only use like a couple loops to sew it together because I don't like the puckered look that doing like a whip stitch can give it. But I'm afraid that there's too much material and it'll way down the stitching together so I'm gonna do the way I don't really like just in case that it tries to pull apart okay so the first thing you're gonna do is make sure for your back panel that your wrong side is facing down and then for your front panel your wrong side is facing up so that technically the cardigan is inside out so make sure that your front panel and your back panel are lined up at the top and up here is where you're going to be sewing first come over here Right there. Just lay down. Oh no, I'm sorry. You can't be in the way. Thank you. You can be there. So here I am using stitch markers to hold the front and the back pieces together so that they won't shift as I'm sewing them together. I like to tie onto my loose thread or my loose yarn on top to, in order to sew things together. Um, it puts a little bit of a knot in it so that it kind of is harder to pull through the stitches, but I just, it's there so I use it. But you could just like fasten on and it, there won't be a knot that you'll have to deal with when you're sewing it together. So in order to sew my work together, I'm going to be doing a slip stitch and you'll start that by putting a crochet hook through both of the panels and then yarning over and pulling through and then to move on you just put the hook through yarn over and pull through and then that loop that you had just pulled through you'll pull through your first loop and it'll make just a small little slip stitch I've been having a hard time explaining this one so if I'm not showing it well or explaining it well just search it to get a better understanding of it I was having a hard time explaining it Learn from my mistakes. Keep track of what goes where because I just sewed the wrong front pa the front panel onto the wrong side. So the wrong side of the work would have been facing outwards. So pay attention. Okay, so I show a little better in this clip how I was sewing it. Uh, now that I have to redo it, um, I was inserting my hook in between each of the half double crochets on what was supposed to be my last row before I added the second uh, row of black half double crochets. So yeah, that's where I was sewing into, and it gave me an entire row sticking out of the top, which is what I later whip stitched down. Okay, and here I'm just showing what the seam is supposed to look like. There you go, one row of black on each side, and it's actually the right side's facing out now. Okay, so in order to sew the sleeve onto the front and back panels of your cardigan, you are going to have the wrong side facing out on all the pieces and fold the sleeve in half and then align it so that the folded part on top is lined up with the top of your cardigan, the shoulder piece, and you are going to use some stitch markers to pin the folded part to the front and back panels of the cardigan so that when you lay your sweater out wide, it should stay in place because of the stitch markers holding it on. And I pinned it just a little bit below where the excess from me sewing the front and the back panels together was so that I'm not getting that bulky part in there. And then you are just going to use some stitch markers to pin along the front and back panels so that the sleeve stays in place while you're sewing. I lost a bunch of my stitch markers in the fluff of this blanket and as I was trying to get them, Mario got mad at me and slapped me. So that was weird. And make sure the sleeves are slightly stretched out while you're pinning it. It'll make them a little bit bigger too, so that'll be nice. Okay, so now that the sleeve is sewn on right there, you are going to, again, wrong side facing out, fold your work over, and you're going to align the front and back panels. Make sure your stripes are all lined up, and then you're going to align the sleeve so that it's folded shut now. And uh, I left a little excess on my back panel because it had stuck out a little bit and I was going for specific measurements so I wanted to try and keep them as true that as possible so I just left a little bit of excess on only the back panel and then you're going to stitch mark to hold everything in place before you start sewing again. Okay 
Okay, so now I'm going to be showing you how I did my button band. Uh, the measurements for this cardigan were based off of another cardigan I own. So that one, the buttonholes pretty much start immediately. So what I will be doing is I will be doing six chains total. One is for turning over. And then I will be doing single crochets. So after you do your first single crochet row, you're going to make your first buttonhole. The width of my ribbing measures to be about an inch and a half, by the way. So now that the first single crochet row is done, you are going to chain one like you have been, and then what you will do is do a single crochet into that first stitch, and I had done it in the back loop only since it is ribbing, but I think it made my button band a little less sturdy, like the buttonholes a little less sturdy, so I would recommend just doing a normal single crochet. And then after that, you will chain three, so that that's the hole for the button. And then you'll skip the next three stitches and work into the last stitch where you will do just another single crochet. Okay, so here you can see my first button hole. It's a little wide, but uh, I have pretty big buttons, so they should be able to just hold on into there. So what I'll be doing is continuing on about four inches between each of the button holes. I did five button holes for this cardigan. I would recommend to just be double checking as you continue on your ribbing to make sure that your button holes aren't going to go into your where your cardigan, the front panel, decreases because you don't really want a button to be on the decrease because it's just going inwards and that's where it'll hang on your chest at that point. It might look a little weird. Um, so yeah. Okay, so here's what I ended up with with my ribbing. It was a little bit longer than the cardigan, but that's okay. I'll just take it out at the end. After I finished the buttonholes, I just wasn't measuring. I was just going to try and get that length. I would recommend pinning your ribbing before you start sewing because I didn't do that. I got lazy and it ended up with me having to like try and scrunch down a little bit of the ribbing so the buttonhole didn't end up on the decrease, which I didn't want it to. So yeah, it kind of it sticks out just a little bit, but I got it to work okay enough I guess. So for sewing on the button band I use the back loop only method which is just where when the two pieces are pressed up against each other you will be putting your darning needle through each of the back loops. It makes it so that the two pieces will be pretty seamlessly pressed against each other and it's just my preferred method of sewing things together. The sides of crochets don't have actual back loops so you just gotta kind of press it in where you can find it. You can see that it just is pretty seamlessly pressed together where I've done this method versus like where it puckers with the slip stitch method I was doing earlier. I had done this on the side. You can see a little bit of where I had to stitch it together but I prefer that over the puckering. Also while I was sewing the cardigan together I had been using a crochet hook to do this back loop sewing method but I realized that I don't really like it, I just prefer the needle. I think it's a little quicker and it can get into the stitches easier than the crochet hook can. So yeah, I just, I figured that out in the process of making this. I don't have a wrong side to my button band. I, it doesn't really matter to me which side's facing outwards, but if you did have a preference, you would want to press the two pieces together so that the wrong sides for both are just facing outwards. This is how the fabric will lay after you do that. So your right sides are facing out. In order to kind of still do this method, even though there's not really any back loops, I would just kind of get the needle in anywhere I could that was a little bit further from the edge. A lot of times there's just this really long gap uh, in between and I would still put it there, which is how I ended up with some of the stitching showing on the sides, but I think it looks okay still. So yeah, you just kind of take what you can get with finding an area to be like kind of like a back loop of a stitch. Also with the back loops method I tend to make my stitches very close together as compared to like what I would do if I were whip stitching or even doing the slip stitch sewing together method. I'm just more afraid with this method that it could fall apart so I like to put more stitches in to try and make it more sturdy. Okay so here's how I made the pockets for my cardigan. I did six chains again for the ribbing. I did single crochets for it as well and I did 16 rows for the ribbing for the top half of the pocket and then once I had my 16 rows I did 17 single crochet rows for the body of the pocket because I I did single crochets instead of like half double crochets because I wanted it to be more sturdy uh, and since there's going to be things in the pocket I didn't want it to be able to poke through or anything so I chose the thicker stitch for it. 
And those 16 rows for the top half of the pocket come out to be 6 inches wide. So here I am continuing on to do my 17 rows. And remember that you are not working into back loops only for this. You are just working into each of the stitches. And those 17 rows came out to be just a little less than 7 inches. A little snail out here. <gasps> snail? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Watch his eye. Watch. Bink. <laughs> okay, so I have already sewn on my first pocket in this part and... I'm very excited also because my buttons came in time for me to sew them on. There they are. I was very excited. So I'll just be showing how to sew on your pockets now. So I had sewn my pocket on about four inches from the bottom ribbing and then about a little less than three and a half inches from the side ribbing. I had also just counted how many stitches in I had sewn my pocket into and that was about five stitches in from the side and then I had sewn into my third row from the ribbing. I had tried so hard to make sure that these pockets were going to be even and yet somehow I ended up like one stitch off. I was, I don't know how I just sewed it on so weird this time, but I had sewn it on way better the first time, which is really funny to me because I didn't even have a flat surface to work on for the first pocket. I had sewn it onto the cardigan during my lunch break at work, which I was sitting in my truck for, so that's a little confusing to me that it ended up more straight. Okay, so in order to sew the po pocket on, I once again am tying onto the tail end from where I had started my pocket. You don't have to do this. Like I said, the little knot is a little annoying when you're sewing, but... I like to have less tail ends to hide, so I do that. But what you're going to do is you're going to insert your needle into one of the legs of one of the half double crochets below the pocket, and then you're going to continue on and put it into one of the legs of the next stitch, the one right next to it. Um, and that is where you'll first start, and you'll pull the yarn through like that. And then what you'll do next is insert your hook into both legs of the stitch directly above where you had just pulled your yarn through. So it's not going to be like half in one stitch, half in another like the one below. It's going to be in both of the legs of that stitch. And you're just going to continue on like that, tightening it. It'll pull up. I'm struggling with the little knot for a second there, but... Um, it'll pull up the half double crochets beneath the pocket to kind of blend the pocket up into or blend the half double crochets up into the pocket and make it look a little more seamless. Also make sure that you're not accidentally sewing into your back panel so that you're not sewing the two pieces together. Also if you're doing this correctly then you won't your black yarn won't even show up on the back panel. They're very surface level stitches. They'll just only show, they'll only be on the front. For the sides of the pockets, it's pretty much the same concept. Um, I'm just kind of sticking it through like a little bit in, in words on the card or on the pocket. And then I anchor in the yarn underneath it with the two with the legs of the stitches. I'm not strictly using one half of one stitch and one half of another in this. I'm just anchoring it in where I can because it's it just it's less seamless looking than the bottom anyway, so it doesn't really matter exactly how I do it in this case. And here I'm just showing that if you have decided to put a border on it, you can just stick your needle through the little V's that'll be on the side of the pocket and then anchor into the half double crochet stitches below it.
Okay, so I'm about to sew my buttons onto my button band, and really quick, I was just doing a little test, make sure that those buttons th fit through the buttonhole. Um, and my original plan for doing this was to sew the buttons on through the buttonhole, but because I wanted it to be like as close as possible so that the ribbing didn't end up like unaligned when it was buttoned up. But I was catching just like the smallest little threads of yarn <laughs> and sewing it together on accident. So uh, I had to undo that and I just ended up aligning the card like the ribbings next to each other and just kind of hoping that they'll be close enough and it was that it looks fine when it's buttoned up I don't really wear it buttoned up because it's so big but yeah and I also ended up doing black yarn through the orange buttons and orange yarn through the black buttons I have finally finished my cardigan and I'm very very excited about it it came out pretty good it was a little bigger than I was expected um, I'm gonna go over like my final thoughts by the way but I, it was bigger than I was expecting it to be the cardigan that I based it off of when we like compared them the cardigan I based it off of was still bigger but this one just it's bulkier so it looks way bigger and it drags itself down off my shoulders more than the cardigan it's based off of um, would but overall I'm super excited it does stay on my shoulders so that's not an issue um, I'm really happy with how it came out. These buttons were bigger than I was expecting them to be. I was expecting them to be big, but they got here and they were still really big. That was a little like, I was just like, eh, okay, whatever. You know, I'm trying to think of things I would do like differently, maybe. I don't really know. I mean, I'd make it smaller, obviously. It's a little, like I said, it's a little big. But yeah, uh, I'm just really excited. It came out great. I love it. It's warm. Uh, it's pretty cheap yarn, but it's soft, so that's very exciting but yeah I have so much yarn I have like six projects worth of yarn so I let me just show you actually so I got this yarn there's yarn in here because this was originally oops this yarn was originally what I was going to use for this project but I kind of hated it I'll probably talk about that in the video I make for that <laughs> There's like three sweaters worth of yarn in there. And then I got some purple yarn. Expect more from me. Uh, I'm a beginner too, so, you know, there's going to be a lot of probably weirdness, I guess, to just how I do things. Uh, so I'm going to be figuring that out and I'm going to be uploading videos as I do it. So subscribe if you want to. Yeah. In the spirit of spooky season, listen to Necromance and Dancing by Bear Ghost. I'm going to recommend songs because I like music and I like to share music. So, uh, yeah, that's probably it from me right now. Do you got nothing to say? So yeah, whatever. Tell me uh, if you made it yourself. Let me know. Uh, send me pictures or something. I'll link my socials. <laughs>